And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She's my my favorite wife. <laughs> How many do you have? <laughs> my only. Oh. <laughs> anyway, my favorite gal. We just got back off the lake, Lake Powell, mm -hmm. and uh, a few days ago. And what do you think? It's coming back. Water levels up. We it was. It was nice. It was nice. So the the cut will be open. So there's a shortcut. If you if you're familiar at Wall Weep, there's Wall Weep and Antelope Marinas on the southern end of the lake, and uh, we have we go to to Wall Weep because that's where the Joe Average guy goes. <laughs> <laughs> All the million dollar boats done at Antelope. <laughs> we we don't have that. <laughs> so we, we <coughs> excuse me. Got all choked up about you that. Yeah, agree. So they've got a, a shortcut that you can kind of they've actually cut through the rock so boats can float through. Well, the water level got so short you couldn't use that for the last couple of years. Now you literally were days away. So the water's rising about a foot and a half a day, literally. And so and they're expecting it's gone up 50, 60 feet, and they're expecting another 30 or 40 feet, the west, yes. the western slopes of the Rockies are melting like crazy. We uh, drove up, not, <coughs> excuse me, we drove up to uh, the headwaters of the Colorado and the San Juan River, and the water is cold, mm -hmm. it is muddy, yeah. it is flowing really fast, and this mm -hmm. is the middle part of the lake, it's right. flowing that much, so mm -hmm. it was kind of wild, it was, yeah. it was fun. Very nice, nice to see the water levels back up, yeah. see people back out. All good. Okay, so we should talk about gardening, not boating or swimming or surfing or any of that other stuff. What do we got today? This is Q and A. The questions. What are people asking about? Okay. What do we got? Well, Sarah, she's in Prescott. She has small black beetles eating the leaves oh, off of some of her tomatoes. Yeah. Just wants to know blah, what is the best product to use to get yeah. rid of those guys before they. Eat the whole plant. So I've got an article coming out. The seven pests you never want to ignore. It's in a two or three weeks. Uh -huh. uh, I'll have that. I'm, just, I'm writing it now, trying to get it all toned in. Kind of. Well, she kinda, needs help now. Well, I know. <laughs> here we go, Sarah. We're here for you. Uh, so there's a spray. Um, so beetles are hard to deal with in the garden. There's not many products that are safe for edible plants that'll work. There's a lot of products that'll work, but soap isn't going to work. Neem oil is not going to work. These beetles have a have a, a hard outer shell. A lot of these things beat up and fall right off. So you need something like better. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a product here at the garden center called In and Out Spray. It's rated for uh, vegetables. It can be used indoors or outdoors. It's just kind of a good... It's not organic. It's a replica of an organic. So it's it's as safe as you can get, and and still be and still be effective basically. Mm -hmm. And so get in and out spray. You'll need a hand sprayer or so, or, or a pump up sprayer or hose in sprayer, mm -hmm. and just spray them. If you hit a beetle, instantly they will turn over, drop down on the ground, and die, or quiver at least. So you kind of want as a gardener it to quiver so you can watch it die slowly because it's more gratifying for you. They're eating your tomato like for goodness sake <laughs> so also works on blister beetles mm -hmm. grasshoppers all the other yes. nasty things that show up mm -hmm. yeah it's one of those beetles are one of those ones that soap people love to put soap in a bottle yeah and spray yeah. and I, I get it you know but it's not going to work for a beetle and soap is very dangerous to use this time when it's hot oh, out it's not a very dangerous it can burn your foliage so mm -hmm. if you're using probably if you're using sprays right now Use them in the morning when it's cool. Mm -hmm. it, and, and so the next thing people ask, well, what about my birds? What about my 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 cat, my dog? I try to keep our dogs out of the area until it's dry, which right now is about, I don't know, 10 minutes. <laughs> it dries really fast. So if you hit the bug, it'll die. But then it mainly coats the foliage. And as they digest the foliage, mm -hmm. it also kills them. So there's kind of a multi, you know, stick on the ground, stick on the plant, mm -hmm for about a week or so. So you got some staying power with this. So it won't, and yet you, yeah, you can easily wash it off your fruits if you're you're not harvesting tomatoes right now, Sarah, but you will be in two or three weeks. Right. So you could still spray, I think up to the day of harvest with that or so darn close to it. Read the Just, label. Yeah, read the label, there you go. <laughs> Legally, we're supposed to say, read listen to my wife. <laughs> All right. But those things that are eating, you want to get them taken care of. 
because they're eating the foliage. Oh, yeah. The plants are not going to yeah. survive that. Okay. Uh, Pity, Prescott Valley. She said her roses were in full bloom a few weeks ago. Now the blossoms have faded. Yeah, well. Rose blossoms so, too. Question is, do she need to trim off those old blossoms so that it'll bloom more? Or what's the best way to get them to come back into yeah. bloom again? Yeah, so, so uh, there's a lot of kind of roses, but all roses are pretty much the same. If you pinch off or deadhead that spent flower, it will start to form a new flower, almost like that. So if it's a traditional rose, like a, a hyper tea, floribunda, grandiflora, climbers, um, those these are traditional. What the book says is just quoting the book: take the flower, count back three nodes, three flower petals, not petals, but leaf petals, and cut it right there at a forty-five degree angle. I generally try to cut it back to a, a leaf that's pointing in the direction I want it to grow. That's kind of a little insider tip. Mm -hmm. um, that really does work. Now, you don't have to count ex literally three leaves. If it's really long and you want it to go five or six leaves to get it more balanced, do that. But it will start to bloom. When you do this, you clean this flower up. 45 days later, you can count on it. 45 days, it will be an absolute glorious full bloom just like that. And that's how you get things to, to bloom at a certain date. Mm -hmm. So if you want it for a wedding or, or a backyard party, 40, count 45 days back before that, prune it back and fertilize. It will be in full bloom just like that. So that's how we force them to bloom here at the garden center. 45 days, 45 days. Now, shrub roses, a little bit different. Shrubs are smaller flowers and they kind of self prune. So they, the, the beauty of those is they'll, they'll, that, that flower stem will, will die off, drop, and it automatically sets a flower by itself. That's the beauty of shrub type of roses. Carpet roses are the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not so much with hybrid teas, floribundas, the bigger ones, the great big long stem roses. You're going to have to actively go back and cut on them at a 45 degree angle, cut back three flower, not flower, three <laughs> leaf petals or nodes and cut it back and just fertilize it with the all-purpose plant food i'm actually using right now here's the bugs are so bad this year i would suggest pruning and fertilizing with rose food with systemic it's got a bug control that'll it gets inside the flower and keeps the aphids and the thrip and the beetles Mm -hmm. out of those flowers. So yeah. can, come see us for more. Take a picture, bring it in. We'll show you exactly how to do it. But yes, dead head, anything that's got a spent flower on it right now, and it will rebloom more mm -hmm. than likely. Right. All right. Last question is from Dan in Chino. He wants to know, is he still have time to plant raspberries and blackberries? Oh, sure. And is there much difference between all the different varieties of raspberries and blackberries. Yeah, so there, it can get confusing. So we probably have, I don't know, a dozen varieties out there. We're picking varieties that are for local gardens. They've proven themselves to produce. So we're, we stay away from those desert varieties. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get a mountain variety that likes, that comes out a little bit later and, and harvests basically summer through fall. And so there's several varieties like that. So I like a triple crown or a thornless blackberry. Great big, very sweet blackberries and no thorns. You can actually fall head first into this <laughs> big bramble, come out of it unscathed. You're not going to look like you've been in a cat fight. Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, there's the same thing for a raspberry. There's a thornless variety of raspberry. Now, uh, they're not, now the more traditional varieties are, they've got thorns on them. So you got to be a little more careful as you go in and pick them, that kind of stuff. But they produce heavy. Oh, my goodness. That's one probably you could check our website, top10plants.com, top, the number 10, plants.com. We've got a whole section there, just edible plants, berries, grapes, pomegranates, figs are all right there. And they'll explain the varieties, the size of price for you, you kind of do your research or better yet, come on into the garden center. We'll give you the grand tour and show you the best varieties of blueberry for your backyard. That's it for this segment, Lisa. Thank you very much. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back.